Hey guys welcome back to Fan Fiction Wannabe, where imagination knows no bounds. Are you ready to dive headfirst into the captivating world of fan fiction? Well, you're in the right place. Don't forget to give credit to the author. Their info can be found in the description below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to join our amazing community. Now for the story. Embers of Hope, Part 1. Bois. That single, solitary sound stole Salem's soul. It wasn't even a real word that finished her off, more of a gurgle, really, a tiny pitiful mule begging for her undivided attention. That, or perhaps food. She couldn't be sure. Still, the immortal woman found herself undone by it all the same. She was the mother of all things grim, terror incarnate. Mortals feared her. Men and women alike wept when they heard her name. Grim everywhere bowed to her. Ashpin and his inner circle feared her very presence. And yet, Salem had no more hope of vanquishing this menace than she did of defeating the gods themselves. The mother of Grimm looked left. The mother of Grimm looked right. Finally, the mother of Grimm looked down. Much to her chagrin, the blasted baby was still there. Bright blue eyes gazed back at her from within a tiny, whiskered face. Where did you come from, she muttered crossly, making a shooing motion as though to banish a bad dream. Go on now, shoo. Much to her chagrin, the baby most assuredly did not, shoo. It stayed right where it was, transfixed by her. At least the blasted brat wasn't crying anymore. That was what had woken her in the first place. Salem scowled at it, and the infant actually had the temerity to giggle. Giggle. At her. What manner of trickery was this? Ashpin's doing, perhaps? No. Her lover had been many things in the past, but not even he would be so cruel as to leave a starving child on her doorstep wrapped in swaddling cloth and left for dead. Which begged the ancient question, where? the hell? Did he come from? Who in their right mind would bring a child to her doorstep? In the Badlands, no less. It was a miracle that he hadn't been eaten alive by some wild grim. Upon further inspection, she realized the ground beneath the boy was scorched black. Well, blacker than usual. Curious. A ritual gone wrong perhaps? Or perhaps some other ghastly secret that she didn't understand. Nor was he unprotected. A pale blue cloth cocooned his body. There was even a name stitched into the said blanket, one her keen eyes instantly discerned. Naruto. She sounded it out, rolling the syllables around on her tongue. Not the name she'd have chosen for a child. Bah. Whatever the case, the origins of this tiny pink creature didn't matter, she supposed. His fate was still sealed. She tentatively nudged the bundle with a boot, unfortunately, this startled the child, and he began crying again. No. Salem would have none of that noise. Cease, she snarled loudly. To her disbelief, it did. Unfortunately, the mother of Grimm miscalculated in her anger, the reprieve she received proved as brief as it was poignant. Then he cried even louder. She grit her teeth against the sound and weighed her options as she stared down at the squalling infant. The sensible thing to do would be to kill it. This was no place for a bawling brat. If she couldn't stomach doing the deed herself, then surely one of her many minions would be more than happy to do it for her. Tyrion. Perhaps. He would feel no guilt from such a fiendish act. Or if she were feeling merciful, she could simply have Watts deposit him at an orphanage somewhere. Yes, that sounded sensible. This was no place for a child. And yet. And yet, the longer Salem stared at this tiny pink creature, the less certain she became. He was still crying, and try as she might to ignore it, something in her dead heart twitched at the sound. Perhaps it was a shame to snuff out a life so young. He could be a useful pawn. She began telling herself such lies to soothe her conscience, to deceive herself. No one else knew of the boy. No one would dare to question her. She could do with him as she pleased, couldn't she? Abruptly, she realized the boy had stopped crying. Oh, he was still whimpering, but he'd simply lost the strength to continue carrying on in such a state. The whimpering made it worse, made her feel as though she were the villain here. Well, she was, but still. Gods knew she was a touch out of practice these days, but Salem was no stranger to children nor the art of raising them. She'd reared four girls, after all. Before. In happier times. Her heart had been warmer then. Before his betrayal and all that had come after. Before no, she hissed the word to herself as much as to the dead air and clamped down on that thought before it could consume her. But it would not be denied. A whim wriggled to the forefront of her mind, blotting out all else until finally, her arms betrayed her. She looked left, looked right, made utterly certain that no one would see what she was about to do. After a moment's hesitation, she awkwardly reached down and plucked the infant off the blackened earth. 
His whimper ceased immediately. Wide, wondering eyes gazed up at her until she pressed him into her shoulder and began to rub the small of his back. Right, then. She could do this. Small, quick steps, retreat swiftly to her quarters, then, then he started drooling on her. Salem twitched. Stop that. Right now. The drooling only continued as it had before. Salem absolutely twitched. I hate you. I really, truly do. She didn't. Not really. Not truly. Nor did she know how much she'd changed her fate. My queen, you seem, distracted. Is this wise? Salem tilted her head as she reclined upon her throne, contemplating Tyrion's inquiry. Did she think raising a baby in the Grimland wise? No, not at all. Not in the least. It was downright foolish, really. Did she care? Not. At. All. She'd never been one to listen to conventional wisdom eons ago, and she wasn't about to start now. Little Naruto gurgled contentedly in her arms, and something in her cold heart melted all over again. Say what you would about his diapers, but the boy was a good baby, in that he hardly cried when she was near or held. Thus, Salem had done the logical thing and decided to carry him everywhere in a sling around her chest. This was what she deemed the most logical choice, mind you, not at all realizing what it did to her image. The mother of all grim, carrying a baby against her breast and breastfeeding him at that. Fair hat, ye mortals. Good boy, she cooed, patting her son's head. The thought brought her up short. So, he was, wasn't he? She'd never had one of those before. Perhaps this would prove a learning experience. Never had she wanted something so badly and never known until she received it. Only a few months in, and already she found herself utterly undone by the boy currently cradled in her arms. Any resistance she might have managed to mount had dissolved within the first 24 hours of taking him into her home. At the time, Salem had thought her reasoning sound. She'd been a mother once before, how hard could it be? So she was a few, centuries out of practice. What could possibly go wrong? In a word? Every. Bloody. Thing. Salem was the queen of the grim. In her life, nothing was ever simple. Not one thing. She couldn't simply walk to the store and buy diapers for her boy now, could she? What's, wily devil that he was, had to be approached first because she needed to secure supplies for the boy. Supplies that Hazel, in turn, was used to procure because most of the living world thought Arthur dead. Grim ranged far and wide to fetch what couldn't simply be acquired through, less than legal means. From there, Tyrion wanted to know what was going on, which in turn meant young Cinder felt left out and was thus brought into the loop. Honestly. Her minions could be such children at times. These last few days had proven to be a panicked blur that she could only vaguely recall, but Salem wouldn't trade them for the world. Which brought her back to Tyrion's question. I am well aware of your concerns, she hummed, laying her chin to rest on the back of her free hand, but this matter isn't up for discussion. In the meantime, we will continue. How goes the search for the Fall Maiden Dash? Then why not just kill the babe? Tyrion put in petulantly. It serves no purpose but to distract you from your divine duties. Salem went absolutely still. I'm sorry. I must have misheard you, Tyrion. Did you just question me? What's audibly slapped a palm against his face? Bollocks. Right then, I'll just be leaving now. Idiot. Hazel rumbled. Good man. He'd taken the words right out of her mouth. Still, they thought they could escape? No. An example must be set. Stay. In her peripherals, she was only distantly aware of the two men freezing up, they didn't flee the room without being dismissed. No, they didn't dare, if only out of fear of drawing down their queen's wrath onto them. The same could not be said of Tyrion. Madman though he was, he wasn't suicidal. He realized his mistake the moment he'd spoken, alas, it was far, far too late to save himself. He stood transfixed by her gaze, wholly unable to move as she rose from her seat. The poor Faunus quivered beneath her burning red eyes. My queen, please, he cried, raising an arm to shield his face. I meant no offense. Salem didn't think, there was only action. A mere flick of her wrist upended the table and flung everyone from their seats like straw dolls. The tiniest twitch of her fingers created a swarm of shadowy arms at Tyrion's feet, ready and willing to respond to their mistress's command. Her follower didn't even have time to try and flee, much less comprehend his own imminent peril. Even as he found his footing they surged upright as one being, countless limbs clawing, tearing, at his body to drag him back down to the floor and pin him there. In his sling, Naruto giggled and tugged at her hair, it almost broke Salem out of her rage. Almost. Gentle red eyes flicked downward. 
There, there, sweetie. Mommy will be with you in a minute. Then her gaze snapped to Tyrion, and her fury intensified tenfold. I would like you to explain to me how it is you failed to understand my words so spectacularly. She began slowly as she adjusted her dress, took her child from her breast, and steadied him in his sling. Only then did she deign to glide forward. Did I not tell you the matter was closed? Tyrion whimpered wordlessly. I beg your forgiveness MRRMPH? An inky black hand clamped down around his mouth, muffling his cries. Stop. With that said, Salem's boot settled on his head with a painful crunch. He dared not raise his eyes to meet hers for fear of being struck down on the spot. Let me rephrase the question. Who is responsible for this situation in which you find yourself? I suppose you could blame Hazel or Watts. A dangerous smile bloomed on her lips. Or even me, if you were feeling bold. But that wouldn't be fair now, would it? We all know who's truly to blame, don't we? You. Blink once for yes, twice for no. He capitulated just so. There you have it, she growled. I've only held this boy for a few months now, Salem continued, reaching down to cup his chin in her hand. But if anything were to happen to Naruto, to my baby, her voice began to darken now, the crimson veins briefly blazing back to life in her face before receding, if someone were to hurt my son, I would kill them, everyone in this room, and then myself. Over. And over. Starting with you. Would you like that, Tyrion? The Faunus frantically shook his head, but with his mouth gagged, he could only grumble. I thought not. Smiling, she released him. Now fix the damn table. Hazel coughed. Pretty sure you were the one to break it, red eyes snapped to him. Excuse me? His burly arms snapped up. Nothing, ma'am. Then help him. It would be so easy to slay him for his impudence. Tyrion, too. Just a little push and their heads would pop right off their shoulders. She could almost see it now. No, 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 she reminded herself. She couldn't do that. She needed Tyrion alive. Just as she needed Hazel and Watts. Not to mention Cinder. Each had their own essential role to play in her plot, now more so than ever. She needed them. Just as she needed the boy. He was good and pure, and oh gods, she just wanted to squeeze him no. Squeezing was bad. She'd break him. She still remembered that much. Restraining her rising anger, she stepped back half a pace. It's important not to lose sight of what drives us. Love, justice, reverence. Her gaze held Tyrion's until he could no longer bear it and looked away. But the moment you put your desires before my own, they will be lost to you. This isn't a threat. This is simply the truth. The path to your desires is only found, through me. And this boy is under my protection. A thought occurred to her suddenly, and in a fit of brilliance, she seized on it. If I am your queen, then he is your prince. She paused to let the words sink in. You will show him the same respect you do to me. Her gaze turned, sweeping them all in a slow loop. You will not harm him in any way, shape, or form. If he asks you for something, you will do your utmost to bring it to him. Failure to do so will result in your summary execution. Three heads bobbed dutifully. Good. Salem slid back into her seat and propped her chin up on her right hand. Now, as I was saying, the fall maiden is somewhere in Vale. We don't know who she is yet, however, wah wah. Naruto chose that precise moment to start crying, causing Salem's attention to snap back to her little one in a heady rush of concern and confusion. Why? He'd been so quiet until now. She immediately began to rock him back and forth, but the wails only intensified. A pungent smell reached her nose not a moment later. Oh. Never mind. You are dismissed. To their credit, neither Tyrion nor Hazel dared to question her. They paused just long enough to right the table before leaving the way they'd come. Was that smoke? They'd certainly vacated with all due haste. Watts was only half a step behind before she caught him with her voice. Not you, Arthur. I have a task for you. The scientist hesitated. Sniffed. Flinched. More diapers? Salem deflated in on herself as he helped her. Gods, yes. Where is Cinder, by the way, she asked. Changing him was meant to be her task. What's fought down a wince? At the risk of imminent bodily peril, I regret to inform you that she has been, training, your grace. A furious snarl resounded somewhere outside, coupled by an equally fierce explosion. Salem's mouth twitched. Well, that explained her absence. Has she now? You can help me, then. Very well. When she offered him Naruto, what's took him readily enough, with only the faintest of sighs. Thankfully, he had a fresh diaper and wipes on hand for the poor boy. In short order, 
He aided her in changing and cleaning the little tyke cleanly and efficiently at that. It stood as a testament to how many times this had happened already. Her minions, with the noted exception of Tyrion, had taken to carrying them around in sealed bags on their personage. Oh gods, now she was imagining Tyrion carrying a bag of diapers around. Oddly enough, the thought made her smile. Salem silenced it before her minion could notice. For something else had claimed her attention. Watts was still holding the boy. Stranger still, Naruto wasn't crying. He looked almost happy. Dare she say content? A baby in the Grimlands, the older man mused, holding the boy before his face. Who would have thought? Little Naruto tilted his head at him. Salem mirrored the expression. Isn't he just precious? His eyes lit up for the merest of moments before he suppressed it. Quite. Perhaps you could teach him things. It wasn't a suggestion. His mustache twitched. I would be honored. Salem knew full well what Watts was after, for some reason, just as she knew the rogue scientist held an interest in her boy. He'd run tests on Naruto, of course, someone had to monitor his health and she was no doctor herself. Whatever he'd found within him had the man over the moon. Something about an internal energy she didn't understand. He thought himself so clever, careful to curry favor with her until this moment when they were alone. Poor fool. She had seen through him from the first. If he wanted to mentor the boy, to sharpen his mind, then who was she to protest? Her counsel each held unique talents of their own, talents they might yet impart upon her progeny when he was of an age. And if she made them think it was their idea to do so, well. Sometimes the carrot served better than the stick. In time, perhaps. Watts conceded. The best seeds are planted early ga. He yelped when the boy found himself a firm hold of his mustache. Salem didn't giggle at the sight. No. Surely not. Nope. Gingerly, she extracted the baby from him. You may go, Arthur. Having won what he was after, he still had the wherewithal to bow before he departed. As you will. Another explosion, this one more distant, rocked the tower upon his departure. Salem exhaled softly. Ah, Sunday. Whatever will I do with you? Manipulating someone well into adolescence was old hat to her these days, something in which she held a wealth of experience. In many ways, Cinder, despite her age, was already an adult. Her past had hollowed her out, leaving only the faintest emotions behind. But this act of rebellion was new. Expected perhaps, but new. For the longest time, Cinder had considered herself Salem's favorite. To have her position so easily usurped, and by a mere babe. The poor girl was jealous. Still, she knew how to goad her into doing what she wanted. Her hunger for power exceeded even Salem's own. Once they ascertained the Fall Maiden's identity she'd likely want to claim that power for herself. Foolish girl. Strength meant nothing. There was always someone stronger than you. Faster than you. Someone with more wealth or influence. In the end, it would be wits and cunning that would win the day. Not strength. Never strength. You needed something more. Perhaps Cinder would realize this. Perhaps not. Who could say? Salem took a moment to reminisce on this as she slipped into the halls herself. What do you think, my dear? Naruto didn't answer her, for he was already sound asleep. Her lips graced his forehead. Well, that was just fine too. She was more than ready to turn in herself, gods be damned. Sleep sounded like the perfect end to an otherwise exhausting day. Yet her feet remained restless, and she found herself wandering all the same. Indeed, the faintest smile quirked at the corner of Salem's mouth as she walked, careful now to soften her footfalls lest she awaken him. A lone seer passed her in the hall, looking agitated. She waved it away with a growl. She was in no mood for any further reports. She just wanted to rest with her child and make it to her quarters unobstructed. In this, she was only partially successful. Salem almost made it outside without being disturbed again. Then the faint sound of footfalls captured her attention, and she blew out an irritated breath. What is it now, she hissed. I wish to be left alone. I understand that, a familiar drawling voice ground her world to a halt, please, pardon the intrusion. Incredulous, the mother of Grimm turned to face the one person in the world who would dare challenge her rule. What are you doing here, Ashbin? For that was Ozma standing in her door leading to her tower, barring her escape to the Grimlands. At least it was the latest incarnation of that cowardly bastard. She knew him by his face. His bespectacled gaze shifted to the tiny bundle in her arms while his own, carried a parcel of some sort. What the devil was he up to this time? Had he come to kill her? Indignation, then confusion, followed by all-consuming anger. Why was he here? 
How had he gotten past the Grimm and her lieutenants? Never mind that. His reasons for coming were irrelevant. He couldn't kill her. He knew that. He'd tried before in the past. Over and over again. Any attempt on his part now would meet the same fate as before. She'd simply regenerate, while she destroyed his body, forcing him to claim another. It would be a long battle, of course, and it would destroy everything around them, but it could do her no lasting harm. With the creation of the Maidens, he was weaker than ever before. He could destroy her tower, slay her minions and cinder, but it would cost him this life. In the meantime, she would return. She always returned. So why come here? Why bring about this fruitless battle again, unless? Naruto stirred in her arms. Salem's black blood turned to ice. No. She couldn't handle it. Not here. Not again. Now came the fear, cold and chilling. It choked her, strangled all thought, and left panic in its place. Without thinking, Salem leaped back and turned her body to one side, shielding the boy from harm with one arm even as she summoned a fireball with another. Her entire body pulsed with darkness, ready to lash out at the slightest provocation. She'd meant what she'd said earlier, and with a pang of dread, Salem realized she had well and truly come undone. Spirits, she'd gotten attached. Before, she wouldn't have cared overmuch if Ozma attacked. But now her blackened soul screamed out against it. No the word was a hiss. Not again. You won't take him. I won't allow it. Ashbin noticed her turn of phrase, that silvery brow shot straight into his hairline. So it's true, then, to her disbelief, he discarded his cane and actually dared to approach her. Salem's surprise jumped up another notch when he pushed said parcel toward her free arm. It contained, diapers, of all things. And formula. Clothes, too. Aghast, she doused the fire in her fingers and awkwardly accepted them with her free arm, too stunned to do anything else. Someone snickered in the background. She swore to kill whomever it was. Later. When she wasn't holding the boy. When she wasn't about to kill everyone and everything in front of her. She must respond. She'd utter a curse so black that he'd wilt, and, eh, she squeaked out eloquently. I, you, bo. Ozma dared another step forward and she shrank back like a frightened schoolgirl. I'd heard the rumors, but I had to see it for myself, her heart lurched painfully at the tenderness in her old lover's words. You're actually taking care of a baby. I didn't think you had it in you. His mouth formed what might have been a frown when her eyes began to blaze. I know you must be furious with me, but please, hear me out, leave. A pillar of flame burst from her palm, and to her dismay, he didn't even deign to fight back. No, the old fool took it right to his chest. Or a crackling, he fell to a knee, coughed, and picked himself back up. Salem had held her breath, waiting for the inevitable counterattack to come. This was a trick. A deception of some sort, meant to make her lower her guard. Surely he would strike any moment now. But he never did. As she looked on, the cane clattered from Oz's grasp, skittering across the floor to rest at her feet. When she looked back, he had both hands raised in quiet contrition. As difficult as it may be to believe, he began, I come in peace. You'll leave in pieces. That's a risk I'm willing to take. How did you know, she shot back. His eyes twinkled. A little bird told me. Crow was dead. Oz was dead. They were all dead. Before she could absolutely eviscerate him, however, the headmaster hastened onward. I would like to propose a truce. Ashbin continued delicately, choosing his words with great care as though his very life depended on them. It did. Regarding that boy. Fine. Play that way, would he? Salem swept Naruto behind her arms. What boy? I see no boy. Salem, please. She swiped at him when he tried to step closer, forcing him back half a pace. I've been aware of him for some time now, he ducked another blow aimed at his legs. I thought you were playing at a ruse of some sort. I thought it was a trick. That you were simply training up another pawn as you always do. But you didn't take him, did you, when she didn't follow up on the ladder, he dared a tiny step forward. You didn't snatch him from a family. Then another. Another. You've been gentle with that boy. Kind. The same kindness you showed our daughters. Why is that? Why now, after all these years? What changed? I, found him, she confessed, cursing herself for the slip. He was alone. Here. In the Grimlands. And you didn't think that he might have parents, her old friend prodded, testing her words. Her wall slammed back into place, and she pulled the boy close. He is mine, Ozma. You're not going to budge on this, are you? Do you even remember how, OZMA? Salem hissed like a struck snake and reared, 
expecting more defiance, more wretched words to make her question herself swore to silence him if he said anything else. She drew all her might and power within herself, channeling it into her free hand for a single devastating blast. She might lose track of him for a few years, but it would be well worth it to silence his twisted tongue. That was unkind of me. She wasn't prepared for him to kneel before her. I apologize. For this, and everything. She couldn't even discern the drivel that spouted from her lips. All the while, his gaze never left hers. I've made my decision, if you cannot be destroyed, then you need to be saved. Irk. Why was he phrasing it like that? Still, he bulldozed on. And it's become painfully clear to me that the boy is the means to do it. You care for him as if he were your own. Save her? Those words hit Salem like a slap in the face, and the mother of Grimm felt her protests wither like a dying flower. Did she dare trust him? No. Of course not. He was the cause of all her ruin. He was the reason she'd become, this. Their four daughters lay dead by his hand, through his own cowardice, he had damned them. She'd be a fool to take him at his word. Never mind her plans, they couldn't just start over again. Could they? Centuries had passed. Eons. He couldn't just walk back into her life as if nothing had happened and beg her forgiveness. That wasn't the way it worked. Did he think her a fool? She would stay strong. She would not succumb to weakness. She. We were finally free, her own voice betrayed her again in a quiet keening sound. Who are you to come back now? It's too late. I think not. He answered with a small, sad smile of his own. I'll accept whatever punishment you deem necessary. Anything? Her brow quirked in confusion. You can't be serious. You're joking. You must be. Try me. Those gray eyes gleamed. You'll find my resolve isn't lacking. Her own scarlet orbs narrowed to hooded slits. We shall see. She couldn't forgive him. Not here. Not yet. Perhaps not ever. There was too much anger, too much pain, too much hurt between them. But by the gods, he was trying, and his words had reached her. Some tiny part of her heart wept for them. For his mistakes as much as hers, for what they'd become. It almost made her want to give her old lover a chance. How very, weak of her. It would be easier to kill him. Yes, to simply wipe him from existence and force him to begin anew. She would pretend this never happened. She would forget everything he'd said to her. Instead, she moved. Salem didn't hesitate. Nor did Ozma. When she attacked, he made no move to defend himself whatsoever. Her heel slammed into his unprotected groin in a blur of black, slicing through his aura as though it were not but butter. The sheer force behind the blow shattered the wall behind her former lover. Anyone else would have perished on the spot. Ashbin only crumpled to the floor with a dry wheeze, writhing in pain. That was a mercy by comparison. He would not die from this, they both knew he had survived far worse. She didn't use any spells. She just kicked him. Over. And over. All right. I deserve this, he croaked out between kicks. Salem still wasn't satisfied with that. You'll get much more, mister. So she kicked him again. For good measure. Once. Twice. Three times. Four. Eventually, she simply couldn't bring herself to hurt him anymore. Her rage simply guttered out. And in its place, the tiniest ember sprang back to life in her heart. Just an ember. A tiny flame. It was enough. When Ozma told her the terms of this truce, Salem couldn't help herself. She started laughing. She wouldn't stop for an hour. Weak. They were all weak. Salem, Watts, Hazel, the lot of them. Cinder seethed with singular fury as she stalked through the halls of Salem's tower, hands balled at her sides as she struggled to control her temper. For once, she was grateful she didn't yet possess the power of the Fall Maiden, had she managed to claim it by now, no doubt the tower would be a melted heap of slag. Which would be bad for her, considering her mistress was immortal, and she most assuredly was not. Salem wouldn't take kindly to having her home brought down on her head, no matter the reason. She'd survive and, well, she wouldn't. Cinder was many things, but she was a survivalist above all. She knew when to pick her battles and when to retreat. When she first saw that mewling babe in Salem's arms? Nope. She'd seen the threat from the first. And what had she done? She'd noped right the hell out of there. Her allies hadn't, they'd each stood their ground in the face of that, child, believing him to be harmless. Each of them was defeated. Salem had been but the first victim of this unholy menace, this great terror. What's fell in the first year? Hazel, the second. To his credit, Tyrion had lasted all of three years before the brat sank his claws into him. 
But now, well into the fourth year, the child inevitably turned his attention to her. He'd already taken her place as Salem's new favorite, and didn't that just burn? Oh, but Cinderfall would not fall prey to him. She refused. There was a pun begging to be used there, but she refused to think of it. Yes, just like that. Well done, young master. Her ears pricked up as Tyrion's distant laughter rippled down a corridor. Aha. The foyer. So that's where they were hiding. Cinder hastened her pace, heels clicking angrily against the cold floor. She was absolutely going to cut one of them this time. Thought they could sneak off and play with the brat, did they? She'd show them. A stray seer skittered into her path, and she batted it aside with one of her blades, uncaring of the pitiful squeak it gave. Ghastly things. She'd never get used to them. Just as she'd never get used to a child underfoot. It wasn't that she cared. No. Not at all. But those old men were going to get the boy killed, which meant Salem would kill all of them. And now her mistress wanted to bring more children here. To the Grimlands. Playdates she called them. All part of some fell agreement with Oshbin. Had everyone gone mad? She had been careful to hold her tongue for all these years, wary of giving the tyke the slightest satisfaction of her attention lest he find an opening, she failed miserably. Because he knew. Somehow, the little bastard knew she was trying to ignore him, and he had made it his life's goal to unravel her. With Salem's backing no less. Clever little, Herc. No. Bad cinder. Evil thoughts. Power. World domination. She was strong. She was mighty. She would not be undone. This child had no power over her. Ah, but there was the foyer. Vengeance was nigh. When she found the door, she slammed it open with a snarl. Tyrion Kalos. What are you doing with him this time? Nothing, dear Cinder, came the catcall. Just enjoying the show. To his credit, the faunus didn't jump at her outburst, because he was far too preoccupied with something else. As was everyone else in the room. At first, she didn't understand what the devil they were up to or why they were ignoring her. And an ignored cinder was an angry cinder. Perhaps a good smack to the head would bring some of them back to reality. She raised her arm to do just that when neither of them so much as gave her the time of day. Until she saw. Weeeee. As ever, young Naruto was wrapped up in a grim shark onesie. Adorable little shit. She hated him. She wanted to hug him. That wasn't a problem, yes. Yes, it was. Ail the problems, rather, the dilemma proved to a more pressing concern because he was currently riding an Ursa around the room as though it were a horse. Even now, the latter bucked and snorted like an angry bronco as it kicked out with its legs and thrashed about. But, that clever blonde bastard only grinned and clung on for dear life. Her face went ashen at the sight. Her mind rebooted. Once. Twice. Thrice. Why is he riding an Ursa? What's shrugged? He wanted to. Naruto squealed in delight. Giddy up. Hazel wiped a proud tear from his eye that's my boy. No no no. Salem would slaughter them if he died. Including her. Cinder darted forward in a scarlet streak and snatched him from its back with one arm, even as the other snapped a sword from her back and brought it down on the beast's head. Naruto didn't cry when she plucked him by the scruff of his neck, but that petulant look he gave her as his mount dissolved? It promised payback. Payback she was more than willing to endure if it meant she got to live another day. Damn brat. Was he trying to get himself killed? Did his vendetta against her go that far? Boo. Tyrion sulked. I was enjoying that. By the gods, what is wrong with you people? Nothing. Perhaps if you interacted with him more, you might agree with some of our methods. What's offered as Naruto wriggled free from her grasp and waltzed over to play with one of his toys. The boy's quite clever for his age. I dare say he's a prodigy. Nor was he ever in any danger, a brow quirked. Or have you forgotten that the Grim won't harm him? The blackhead blinked slowly. No. Watts didn't smile. But his mustache twitched. Hazel was wise enough to cover his mouth with a large forearm. Tyrion, was Tyrion, far less subtle when he cackled and threw himself to the floor. Stop, damn you. With a supreme effort of will, Cinder mastered herself. Must. Not. Kill. No matter how much she might want to. Maybe someday. Still, the laughter of Tyrion grated on her nerves, worse, Naruto had started laughing too, a soft little giggle that only a child could produce. Her fingers twitched traitorously towards him. Not to rip and tear, but for another purpose entirely. Curse her heart. She wanted to squeeze him. This was precisely why she had worked so hard to avoid him in the past. 
there was just something about the boy that made her want to spoil him rotten. Frantically, she settled for the first insult she could find. He hasn't spoken any of our names yet. Cinder clicked her tongue in quiet satisfaction. Some prodigy. And our goddess is most distressed about that, Tyrion tittered merrily. But not I. Oh, no. For I will be victorious. Over my dead body, what's grumbled? All eyes turned to him. I'm joking, of course, he lied. Far be it from me to upset our queen. It didn't take long for Cinder to put the puzzle pieces together. She might be younger than the lot of them, but she liked to believe her mind was sharper than these three put together. It wouldn't do to hurt their delicate feelings, of course, so she settled for a small scoff. You're betting on whose name he says first? Perhaps you should play with him yourself, Hazel offered. He's not a bad child. She risked a gaze at him. Naruto waved. And her heart gave a painful lurch. Must, fight, instincts. Play with him? Cinder inhaled with a sharp hiss meant to mask her true feelings. Bah! Weak, the lot of you. Look at him, she flung an incredulous finger at said boy, who gazed back at her with guileless blue eyes. The little brat's not even five, and half of you are already wrapped around his little finger. Salem swooning over him and snatching children for him to play with. Tyrion wants to teach him to murder everything. Cinder paused for a breath. Oh, but she wasn't done. Not by a long shot. I see you trying to creep away over there, what's? You gave him a math book just this morning, the genius flinched only slightly beneath her words. Hazel's already unlocked his aura for crying out loud. Well, she drew herself up with more confidence than she felt. I, for one, will not be swayed by this little hellspawn, Sienda, Naruto lisped suddenly, pointing in her direction. Her head snapped around with an audible crack. Did he just say my name? Watts groaned and slapped a large bundle of lean into Hazel's awaiting hand. Take your damn money. Neither man batted an eyelash when Cinder bolted back to the boy's side and crushed him against her bosom. I take it back, she squealed. Best. Kid. Ever. A thought occurred to her then. Wait. He said my name first. Where's my cut? Another bundle flew at Cinder's face only to be nimbly snagged and stuffed into one of the many hidden pouches on her person before anyone could question its existence. Her cackle put Tyrion's to shame. Of course, any and all forms of laughter made Naruto laugh, and that just made Cinder laugh all the more. Just like that, the last of her walls came crumbling down into so much dust. Because just now? For a fleeting instant, she had seen something, glimpsed a familiar gleam in those baby blue eyes, one she knew all too well if only because his triumphant smirk reminded her of herself. In a single move, he'd brought what's low. How quickly you changed your tune. Hazel snorted with a knowing air, drawing a glower from Salem's resident schemer. What brought this on? Because this boy knew more than he let on. Of course, he did. He'd been watching her. Perhaps he'd picked up more than she thought. Crushing him closer to her chest, Cinder began to hum softly to herself as the beginnings of a new scheme were born. I've changed my mind, she purred the words. He and I are going to get along splendidly. Ashpin considered himself a bulwark. Indeed, he was a veritable bastion of stoicism and severity, one who stood fast against any and all evils in this world. His deeds were many, his work spoken in deed and legend. In countless lives, he had worked tirelessly for the betterment of mankind. He destroyed villains. Laid low criminal organizations who would see everything brought to ruin. He had even stepped onto the field of battle himself and laid low entire armies during the Great War to bring peace to Remnant, then established the Huntsman Academies to maintain said peace. For years now, he'd waged a shadow war, one he was still very much in the middle of waging. With evil incarnate to ensure this tenuous period of calm remained as such. He would do anything to preserve it. No risk was too great, no sacrifice too high, so long as he was the one to make said sacrifice. Thus armed with a thermos full of coffee and his trusty cane, did Ashpin depart from his craft and venture forth into the heart of darkness once more. One could never tell time in the grimlands by the sky, he still wasn't certain whether it was day or night. Time was tricky here, piloting a bullhead by himself was a meager feat compared to this. That aside, Salem's tower truly was a marvel of engineering, a great ghastly spire that seemed to challenge the very heavens. A flock of giant nevermore wheeled high in the sky overhead, and the landing pad afforded Ashpin a closer view of them than he would have liked. He knew she had but to will it, and they would tear him limb from limb. He was strong, but not that strong. Not anymore. Not since the Maidens. It was always like this, even after a number of years now, 
He still expected her to try something at times, and it was only her lack of action that soothed his nerves. And so the truce remained. Bracing himself, the aging headmaster ascended the stairs into the archway beyond. His bones protested every step of the way, serving as a sullen reminder of his age. This body had grown old. How many years of life did it have left? Twenty? Ten? Less? He didn't relish the idea of starting over again as an adolescent, much less forcing himself upon a simple soul. Whom thoughts for later, he supposed. As ever, no one challenged him when he reached the foyer, only Hazel was bold enough to threaten him here, and he appeared to be absent today. As were Salem's other, associates. Thank the gods for small mercies. Taking a moment to compose himself, the immortal allowed his gaze to rove across the grand space before him. He couldn't quite call it homey just yet, but it was much improved since last year's visit, would that he could more often. For he could see Salem had gone to great lengths to renovate in his absence. She'd even dragged in new furniture, quite literally, judging by the haphazard place of mismatched chairs and tables. He could still see the marks in the stone where they'd been hauled about. Hazel's doing no doubt, that brute of a man was many things, but subtle he was most assuredly not. A stray seer floated by with a toy clutched in one of its many tentacles, giving him pause. Against his better judgment, Oshpin prodded it with his cane, causing it to round on him as he asked a question. I'm sorry, but have you seen, aha? Uh -huh. His ears pricked up at a distant cry, followed by the sound of rapidly approaching footsteps in the distance. Noise carried here, and he heard them long before he saw their owner. It brought a smile to his face. He hadn't even announced himself yet, meaning the boy must have sensed him already. You're back. Some called Oshpin cold. Some said he cared for nothing and no one. This was something of a half-truth. It had to be him, rather, the world had to believe that he was such. Someone else might have gotten it wrong. Yes, the world thought he held no attachments to anyone or anything. To even suggest otherwise was utter nonsense and drivel and, all those lies came crumbling down the moment a blonde blur barreled into his chest. It was like being struck by a meteor head-on, if said meteor were the size of a seven-year-old boy bearing the momentum of a falling star behind him. Even with his aura up, Oshpin nearly found himself propelled back out the door and into the grimlands from whence he'd come. Gods above, the boy was getting strong. Had it been that long already? Without thinking, he reached down with his free arm and held his attacker close. Careful now, he chided, you nearly broke my ribs that time. Sorry, I was just excited. Bright blue eyes framed by whiskered cheeks beamed up as the boy babbled happily in his embrace. I mean, it's been already almost a year. Guess what? I can walk on walls now. Oshpin's brain rebooted. What? Oops. Um, miss it ya, dead? Realizing his gaffe, Naruto buried his head deeper into Oshpin's chest. He's not lying, you know. He gave me quite the fright last week, a heartbreaking familiar voice plucked at Oshpin's heartstrings and he knew who he would find when he looked up. Sure enough, Salem's pale hand graced his shoulder, her lips his cheek, and her hips brushed his cheek in passing. Still alive, I see. I thought you would have taken a new body by now. Mom, you. Naruto groaned. I'm right here. So you are, dear. How would you like a little brother? Or perhaps a sister? Eh? Oshpin tried to meet that retort with one of his own. He failed. Salem had that effect on you. Instead, he focused on the little things. She'd let her hair down today. She still wore that blessed black backless gown of hers, and those angry red veins had receded yet further from her face. Oh, she wasn't fully relaxed, not truly, but it was a far cry from the taut anger he'd seen in his wife Ian's ago. It still wasn't quite the reception he had been hoping for, and wouldn't be with Naruto in the room, but the fact that she was willing to even touch him at all without immolating his bits proved promising enough. Baby Steps once again the irony of the situation struck him like a slap in the face. Ex-wife, he reminded himself with a grimace. Through no fault but his own. Dad? Naruto muttered again, mistaking his silence for something else. You okay? Irk. And there it was, the crux of the matter. A single word laid him low. Oshpin dropped his thermos and toppled backward with a croak. I just took critical damage. Salem strode past and swiped it before it could crash to the floor. Is that so? then you won't be needing this, will you? I never said that. Let her have his coffee? No. Never. Oshpin's cane flicked out to snatch it out of her grasp, heedless of the black look she gave him in return. Salem was dangerous enough on her own, but she was nigh on terrifying when you added caffeine into the equation. Coffee spiked with alcohol? 
out of the question. Ashbin had experienced the horror of a drunken Salem once before. Once. Never again. Naruto plucked it from his hands and tossed it to his mother, who caught it, much to Ashbin's great dismay. Treachery. By his own flesh and blood. Well, they weren't related, but still. Salem's eyebrows all but vanished into her hair as she sipped from her stolen prize. Had she read his mind? It's not treachery if he was loyal to me all along. Ashbin shot a half-hearted glower at the boy as he leaned against a wall. Sorry, not sorry, came the laugh. Mom's way scarier. Scary am I? Salem swept in behind him. Gah. No. Let me go. Clad in dark fabric to match his mother, he'd have to get him better clothes, young Naruto still cut a rather dashing figure, even as he squirmed in Salem's now tickling grasp. Already tall for his age, he'd grown further still since he'd seen him last. Somehow, the thought made Oz's heart hurt. He didn't see him nearly as much as he would have liked. Salem, meanwhile, draped herself across a nearby couch with a fond smile as their son continued to flail weakly in her arms. She looked almost normal as she lounged on the couch, one arm draped over Naruto as he chatted with her. Softer, less angry, more relaxed than she'd been in an age. Her beautiful red eyes followed Naruto's small form with quiet delight, nothing more. It was the same loving expression she'd seemed aimed at their daughters, once upon a time. Before the fire. Before everything changed. They'd managed to maintain a fragile peace between them. For now. Oh, they still had their plots and their schemes where Naruto was concerned, they effectively left work at the door. Salem wasn't foolish enough to walk into Vale, and while Team STRQ was beginning to wonder at Ashbin's strange absences, they'd made it work. Somehow. There were times when he wondered about this, wondered if he had been right to leave all those years ago, to flee like a coward without speaking to her. She'd reacted the only way she knew how. Loudly. Had cooler heads prevailed, their girls might have survived. He wasn't sure what possessed Salem to take in this boy, but neither could he deny the change it had wrought in her. Sometimes subtle, sometimes overt, but change nonetheless. Had the God of Light been wrong after all? If she could take in a child and be a loving mother to him, then surely, surely there was hope for her. Then the door crashed open and all thoughts of change vanished from Ashbin's mind. I have returned, my queen. Tyrion Kalos was many things. Trustworthy was not one of them. Ashbin wanted to believe that there was hope for Salem. Naruto had opened his eyes to that. Tyrion? Nope. Lots of nope. Big freaking nope sandwich. He was a madman through and through, a murderer who reveled in pain and the taking of lives. He was uncontrollable and not to be trusted. The fact that Salem somehow commanded him? Miraculous. That young Naruto had him wrapped so tightly around his little finger was surely nothing short of unholy. Hello, favorite nephew, he saw Naruto and his face lit up with childlike glee. Uncle, the boy took the opportunity to wriggle free. I'm your only nephew. And that makes you my favorite, such was the unassailable logic of a madman. You couldn't argue with it. But enough of that. I brought you a gift, as your mother commanded. Father and son exchanged a blank look. Gift? Only then did Ashbin finally notice the strange black sack slung over Tyrion's shoulder. It was moving and something in him twitched at the sight. Naruto noticed as well, and judging by his horrified expression, he'd come to the same conclusion. No. She wouldn't, surely not. Oh, who was he kidding? Salem had always been a woman of extremes. Yet somehow, this still came as a surprise to him. He'd heard tell of children disappearing all along the coast, but not this lunacy. Least of all when the madman plucked out a bound girl from within the heavy bag. Ashbin had time enough to glimpse dark clothes, wide amber eyes and, feline ears? Oh, dear. Mom. Naruto cried, palming his face. You didn't. Mom indeed, Ashbin thought. And who might that poor girl be? No one to concern yourself with. Salem's sunny smile alarmed him enough. Just a new friend for our son. Tyrion's captive snarled furiously behind her gag and the lunatic flashed her a black look. It is as my goddess says. None of your concern. Naruto didn't move, he all but dove at Tyrion, leaping up to grab the poor girl from his grasp before pulling her to safety. His noble efforts earned him a vicious headbutt from the girl but he continued on undaunted. Quick as a flash he had both her arms free, followed soon thereafter by her legs, in the next instant he drew her aside with a rushed apology. Who did you kidnap this time? Ashbin asked. Do you even know her name? Tyrion shrugged helplessly. Salem favored him with a frown and he groaned anew. Had she not even considered that much? To be honest, I'm not quite sure. 
Her lips pursed as Naruto awkwardly removed the girl's gag. What's your name, child? Speak up now. Blake. Ah, there you have it. Salem preened, placing both hands in her lap as Naruto muttered something comforting to the new arrival. Her name's Blake. She'll be staying here for the foreseeable future. Let's hope she works out better than the last one. Blake squeaked. Last one? Oh yes, it was quite the disaster. The mother of all Grimm favored her with a bemused look. What was his name? Ah. Carden. That's the one. He tried to bully my boy. We had to get rid of him, you see. Hmm. Naruto agreed thoughtlessly. Didn't end well. Of course, the poor girl misunderstood that remark in its entirety, before the boy could explain himself she foamed at the mouth and went limp. Naruto narrowly managed to catch her and ease her to the floor before she could dash her head against something. In the same instant, he kicked out with his right leg and his foot collided with the back of Tyrion's knee, causing the older man to yelp and clutch at his heel. Dear nephew, he cried out. What was that for? Lots of things. Oh, dear. It appears she fainted. Salem crooned with false sincerity. Poor thing. Don't worry, we'll make her comfortable here. This. Ashpin groaned. This is why we can't have nice things. Did you at least inform her parents that you intend to return her like the rest? Salem had returned Carden to his family, of course. Even she wasn't so foolish as to steal children and keep them indefinitely. Poor boy, he would be babbling about monsters and madmen for the rest of his life. No one would believe him. Granted, he'd never met the Winchester Scion in person, but he dimly recalled Naruto having a black eye once. Once. Salem's anger had been legendary that day. No. His ex-wife turned aside awkwardly under his piercing glare. Never mind that. Coughing into a fist, she looked away. Tyrion, I instructed you to return with two, not one. Where is the other one? Other one? Naruto squawked. Mom, no. Mom, yes. You need playmates. Tyrion, however, blinked and peered back into the bag. I could have sworn there was another one in here. He frowned fretfully. Oh dear, she must have slipped off when I wasn't looking. Wait. Ashpin paused, suddenly concerned when no immediate cry of condemnation came from Naruto. He looked left. Looked right. Where did he go? Alas, he had even less time to ponder the boy's absence before a crimson portal opened beside him. Wait. The immortal man rounded on it, eyes wide. Portal, his startled mind balked. Such a portal implied Raven's presence, among other things. Raven meant the rest of Team STRQ wasn't far behind, which meant Salem had likely taken someone important to- Oh! Oh, dear. He hadn't simply miscalculated in this. He blundered. Badly. His brain had only just begun to comprehend his peril when the woman herself burst out of said portal and rammed her fist into his nose. Ospiathan. The man toppled backward like a falling tree. Salem's rich laughter floated through the room as he lost consciousness. Yang Xiaolong was lost in the dark. Well, cold, dark, and alone, but mostly cold. Clad in little more than a pair of golden pajamas, she stumbled on through the halls, frightened out of her wits. She didn't even know where she was or how she'd gotten here in the first place, one moment she'd been playing outside with Ruby, the next, a giant Nevermore swooped down on them. Like any good cousin, she'd shoved Rubes out of the way, unfortunately, that meant the bird snatched her instead. Said bird had given her to some crazy guy, who in turn tossed her into a sack and now, here she was. By some miracle she'd woken alone and managed to get free of her bindings. Heh. She was just awesome like that. There had been another girl who had been, what was this, kidnapping? It felt like she'd been kidnapped. In reality, her daring feet left her stranded in a terrible tower with no way out, no recourse but to wander the halls and hope for an exit. What else could she possibly do? She wasn't strong enough, she didn't have any weapons or even a scroll to call for help. She was only seven years old. Oh gods. Never mind Summer, mom was gonna flip. Raven would go absolutely insane. She almost wished she would be there to see it, but something told her she wasn't going to survive the next five minutes. Bleak red eyes stalked her from the shadows wherever she went, ever watchful and intent. Grim? She'd never seen one before, but they had to be. Why weren't they attacking her? She knew her lessons, Grim always attacked when they saw people, and these were big Grim indeed. Bigger than her, certainly. At some unseen command, one of them tensed and lurched out of the darkness ahead of her. It saw her and sniffed, making a strange panting sound. Young panic get. Nope. 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 
instinct took over, and she swatted it on the nose with all the might a child possessed, needless to say, the Beowulf took exception to that. A giant paw swiped Yang from her feet and sent her tumbling backward into a wall. Despite her best efforts, she felt angry tears sting at the corners of her eyes. This was it, then. She was going to die here. I'm sorry, Rube. All at once, a harsh whistle burst through the hall. No, a young voice called, carrying with it the weight of command. Bad Beowulf. She's not for eating. Every single Grim flinched as though they'd been physically struck. Even Yang wasn't immune to the sharp bark of anger. The greatest of them whined and sketched an awkward step forward, only to find itself blocked by yet another, smaller blur of black. Lucius. A tan finger swatted its snout and this time, the beast didn't retaliate. Down. I mean it. You sit right now mister, or you won't get any treats. It was like flicking a switch, a single rebuke did more damage than she ever could and caused the creature to crash down onto its hind legs with a dull thud. Just seeing it reminded Yang of her new puppy. Poor Zvi, he couldn't hold a candle to this. As she looked on in disbelief, her rescuer stepped forward and seized the Beowulf by its ear. Now go sit in the corner and think on what you've done, he commanded. Much to Yang's disbelief, the wolf whimpered. Actually whimpered. That settled it. She'd clearly died and gone to the afterlife because this was not happening. Not not not. Don't you talk back to me. Shoo. Reluctantly, the lead Beowulf slunk off, trailed by the rest of its fellows. With them effectively dispatched, she finally found herself face to face with a boy barely a head taller than her, clad in fine black silk and combat boots. The contrast of it drew a small, hysteric chuckle from her. He saw it and frowned, blue eyes squinting as his whiskered cheeks dimpled in quiet confusion. Ha! Huh. He was blonde, too. Neat. Sorry about that, he smiled sheepishly. They're a rambunctious bunch. So? I'm guessing mom had you kidnapped, too? Young Blinket. Once. Twice. Thrice. Again for good measure. Bois, she managed eloquently. To his credit, the young boy barely batted an eyelash at her confusion. What the hell was this? He didn't look lost, afraid, or even sane for that matter. Any child should be, but he simply tilted his head at her like a curious fox. Perhaps he was one. He certainly had the whiskered cheeks for it. He made no move to approach her or threaten her in any way, so he couldn't be that bad, right? Then again, dad said mom used to be bad. That was silly, of course, mom was, well, mom. She wasn't strange like Andy Summer, and Yang had nothing but fond memories of her. I'll take that as a yes. Abruptly, his frown shattered into a sunny smile. Let me guess, crazy guy with a scorpion tail? Scorpion? Oh! Realization dawned, and Yang snapped her fingers at him. That's the one. Tan hand stabbed into his pockets. That'd be Uncle Tyrion. Sorry about him. Yang's head continued to spin. Uncle? Eh, just like that, his expression turned sheepish. Look, I'm really sorry about this and all but I think this is a big misunderstanding, as she looked on, he looped both arms behind his head. I think my mom kinda got the idea in her head that I was lonely. That I needed friends, you know? Said it was important for my development, or something, he added when her head bobbed in reluctant agreement. So, that's probably why this happened. Don't worry, I'll make sure she brings you back, he offered her his hand. Wanna play tag in the meantime? Here. Young Balket. What about the Grim? Eh, it's fine, he shrugged. They like me. That's not normal. Normal? Naruto blinked. Neither am I dad keeps saying that. Are you normal? To be fair, Naruto had no way of knowing the button he'd just pressed. Even as a child, Yang loathed the idea of normality. Normal people were weak. Normal folk couldn't fight back. What was ordinary anyway? She had a pair of kick-ass parents, an awesome uncle, and an even more awesome aunt. Her cousin could run at super speed, for crying out loud. She never wanted to be normal. Not now, not ever. Well, no. She flailed her arms at him in a fit of pique. I'm anything but normal, Buster. I'm Yang Xiaolong, for crying out loud. I'm awesome and… Boop. Lilac eyes widened as Naruto swatted her on the nose. She froze. Now you're it. He bolted before she could deny it. Yang made her decision in an instant. Come back here. Thank you for watching our YouTube video. Your support means the world to us. We hope you enjoyed the content and had a fantastic time immersing yourself in our anime universe. Don't forget to give credit to the author. Their info can be found in the description. 
If you love what you saw, we kindly ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. By doing so, you'll stay up to date with all our latest releases and join a community of passionate anime enthusiasts. Don't forget to check out the video description for links to other exciting videos. We have a treasure trove of anime content waiting for you to explore. Once again, thank you for being a part of our anime journey. Your support keeps our passion alive.